Welcome to Modern Aikidoist Podcast. If you would like to support my work, please help by liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast if you're watching this on YouTube or BitChute. These are all free and help out a great deal. Word of mouth is how shows like this reach more people who are interested. Another way you can support this podcast is by way of a PayPal tip jar. You can leave a donation of any amount you like or set up a monthly donation just like Patreon or Subscribestar. Only I don't make you pay for my content. I only invite you to contribute. There's a link in the description. I sincerely appreciate your interest and support. We've all heard that the role of uke, or the attacker, in Aikido training is crucial. In today's episode, I'm going to go into it in detail, and I will cover some aspects which you may not have heard of before. These are aspects which will not only make your Aikido better, but will accelerate how quickly your partner learns. There is a lot to this topic, so let's dig right into it. I'll get the obvious out of the way first. Uke's job is to play the role of the attacker, upon which Nage can practice technique. Uke must be able to take Ukemi, which is the ability to roll or take a fall safely. Ukemi really is the art of protecting yourself during Aikido training. You can't be a good Uke in Aikido without this skill. At first, taking Ukemi means that you know the technique you are about to have applied to you and how to protect yourself through the throw or the fall. As your Ukemi skills build, you don't need to know in advance which maneuver you need. You feel the direction your body is being guided and you can be thrown safely from any direction into any type of fall. While there are some Aikido practitioners with fantastic ukemi skills, this alone doesn't make them great ukes. Being uke does not mean that your purpose is to execute superb rolls or break falls alone. It doesn't mean that you're there to make Nage's Aikido look pretty. It doesn't mean that you're there to assure Nage's technique is successful every time. These are problems which have come about from too much focus on the aesthetic of Aikido. It's also a byproduct of having practitioners want Aikido to appear flawless. I think yet another factor is avoiding being scolded or scorned by seniors who disapprove of ukes who don't make them look good. Being a good uke means that you need to provide a sincere attack so Nage can learn. That is, your attack must be a real attack, even though you are quite confident it will fail. If there is one trap which is easiest to fall into, it's to get lazy with your attacks because you know Nage will counter it. It is a trap that I've fallen into many times myself. It's important to always remind yourself to get close enough to make solid contact for the attack you are attempting. It's easy to start too far away. This is a particular trait of new students who don't understand range very well yet and are shy about the possibility of hitting their training partners accidentally. It's also easy to throw poorly targeted strikes because you know they will not land. Going along with these bad habits are executing attacks which have no intent behind them. In terms of grabs, these are limp grabs which may have a strong hand grip or not, but the arms and body are weak and not energized. Such grabs are nothing like an actual attack. Dealing with a weak or half-hearted grab is elementary, so make sure to grab for real. One thing that I've done to modernize grabs in my dojo is in regards to katadori or munadori, which is shoulder grab or center lapel grab. I call it a hockey grab. Instead of a hand gently grabbing the gi and settling in, Uke shoots his hand out and pushes Nage slightly to get a solid grip on the gi. This is a very common way for people to be grabbed, which may be the first physical motion in a fight or an assault. There are several reasons this happens. One, there's a better chance of getting a good grab on the target. Two, it shocks the target and may frighten him into freezing. And three, there's an excellent chance it will take the target's posture. Do these last two sound familiar? They should. They are both principles of Aikido. Shoto Asezu, which means control the first move, and Kazushi, which is take posture. There's no reason as Uke that you should not be attempting to abide by these principles. Doing so will train Nage to deal with real aggression. Go gentle on Nage in the dojo and they won't be mentally prepared to be handled roughly. When the grab does come, it should have a solid grip and a strong body behind it. We do Nage no favors by being a rag doll who's easily moved around. This may make a student feel good, but they are not stupid. They will know when you are taking falls for them or going excessively light. Avoid the temptation to put on an act for them, where it seems like you're resisting but you're really not. It won't be long before students will notice what's going on. We should not be lying to students, either in what we say or how we act. This tends to happen most often when working with someone who is smaller or doesn't have sufficient strength or size for a particular technique. 
It's a fact that some techniques do not work well for some people because of a size or strength disparity. We should never pretend otherwise. Although this falls squarely in the realm of instructor behavior, as Uke, your partner is learning from you. While you are working together, as Uke, you are teaching Nage. You must take that responsibility very seriously. You have the power to sponsor great growth in Nage, just as you have the power to frustrate them and actually damage their skills. A good Uke will always provide a benefit to their training partner, not waste their time or effort. If I could boil down the goal of Uke to one concept, I think this would be it. Uke's goal is to find Nage's level of ability, then challenge them by making them work a little beyond their abilities. If you are noticing Nage is bored or is just cruising without being challenged, you're going too easy. That would mean that you're attacking too slowly, telegraphing too much, providing no variation on your movements, offering no resistance, you're stopping your intent, or just being a rag doll. Nage will likely enjoy looking good and succeeding at all his reps, but he really won't learn anything. We learn far more from failure than we do success. That is, Nage should be finding his shortcomings and discovering which aspects of his technique need work. An easy uke will not help him do this. There is a point of diminishing returns, though. If you give Nage too much failure, through higher speed, intensity, or variations, he may likely get confused and frustrated. We can see examples of this in the animal world. Mice, for example, teach their young how to fight, just like wolves, dogs, cats, and many other animals do. They all tend to follow the same method. The adult plays lightly with the young one and lets them win about 80% of the time. That's a severe majority. As the young learn, the complexity of the attacks increases, but never to the point where the adult always dominates the young. If this happens, the young will stop trying and learn to give up instantly. We should take a cue from this process, as this is an effective way of transferring skills through hands-on practice. We want our students to enjoy their training, learning, and not being so frustrated that they feel compelled to quit. Guilting them into staying students isn't a good strategy either. They will go find a better instructor who can make learning enjoyable and productive for them. I'm now going to recommend something which is frowned upon in some dojos, but I think should be common practice. If your partner is struggling with something, don't let them get frustrated or continue practicing the wrong way. Offer them advice on how to do their technique better. Some instructors are very strict and have firm rules that no students should speak in class, including offering assistance to others. The belief here is that no one but the instructor should provide any advice to the students. Personally, I find that this is an outdated teaching method. It acts as a bottleneck and does not serve the students particularly well. If an instructor doesn't notice a student struggling, they get no correction or advice. Again, this is very frustrating for students. Doing this also makes learning take longer than it should. I suppose if the purpose is to keep students paying for classes, then it means more money is to be made. I don't see any reason why students shouldn't be allowed to help their training partner when they see it's needed and no one else is there to do it. That's just me, though. I always enjoy training with someone who is actively trying to assist me with improvement and don't particularly enjoy someone who doesn't. I really enjoy helping my training partner learn and even in a few minutes take away something which made their Aikido better. The key here is to find where your Nage is and what they're working on and provide the particular attack speed, intensity, and variation that would be helpful to them. This is an uke skill all on its own, but it isn't difficult or complicated. A great first step is to outright ask what they would like. If you get the impression they are training on cruise control, you can always say, hey, it feels like you're in a comfort zone, and I think you can handle a little more. Don't force it on your partner, but the goal of martial arts training is to challenge yourself. That means working beyond your comfort zone. There's no need to go crazy, but training is about finding out where your boundaries are and pushing them out a bit. Every time you leave the mat, you should be capable of a little more. You should be better, even if only by a small amount. Another skill of a good uke is to shake up nage a bit when it appears they get too comfortable in technique. One of the reasons nage gets comfortable is that they know how uke will respond. You can never be certain how a real attacker or opponent will respond. When you get experience, you have at best an educated guess, but people are unpredictable. Our training should include different responses. A good uke should know what they are and explore them. A good time to do this is when you see Nage turn on the cruise control. I'm sure we've all seen it and been guilty of it. 
I always appreciated when my uke surprised me and shook me out of my comfort zone. As uke, keep your eyes on nage. Be careful of letting them get lazy or complacent. Break your attack rhythm so they don't get used to anticipating your movement. If you're not working with good ukes, you will not improve, or at least very much. You work with good ukes, and your skills will improve remarkably. It's easy to think that when you are nage, you are learning Aikido, and you have to give that up to be uke. This couldn't be farther from the truth. You will learn more about Aikido being uke than nage. If you view your role as uke as part instructor, then your teaching skills will grow immensely as you work with partners, especially new and intermediate students. They will teach you the most, as long as you don't let your ego dismiss the idea. The next thing I want to mention is what you can do when you are nage and you find that your uke isn't challenging you. Just ask them to go a little faster, a little stronger, or not telegraph as much. Invite them or instruct them how to attack better. Their attack should be sharp because any martial artist should know how to attack well. The better the attacks our ukes throw at us are, the better we will be as practitioners. You are doing your partner a favor by providing solid attacks. You're making their Aikido better. I've saved the best and most challenging uke skill for last. There are few ukes who can do this, and the ones who can are worth their weight in gold. The trait that I'm talking about is the ability to adjust the speed of your attack but maintain the intensity and energy even at slower speeds. I'm including having the experience to stay accurate to the timing and movement which happens at faster speeds. It also means staying to that slower speed for the sake of your nage being able to learn. It sounds pretty simple, but I've seen few martial artists who can do this, even very experienced ones. It is very easy to either speed up or lose the same movement and energy when you slow down. When people slow down, they tend to lose the excitement factor and get lazy. Their posture and movement no longer reflect the reality of what a real attack would look like. The result is that Nage doesn't get to see, read, or experience a real attack. Thus, the training ends up being ineffective at preparing practitioners for full-speed, full-intensity attacks. Uke plays the crucial role in this aspect of the Uke-Nage relationship. An aspect of being able to provide the correct structure, movement, and body position for good attacks is knowing how to execute them properly. How can you develop effective defenses from punches if your Uke has no idea how to throw a decent punch? How complete is a martial artist who is not familiar with the mechanics and method of throwing a solid punch? It doesn't mean that they have to employ punches as their preferred response in a real situation, but they should know how to do them and do them well. There is really no excuse for such gaping holes in our skill set. Let me also make the distinction between being able to describe how to punch well and actually being able to do it. Talking to your nage about how a punch is thrown won't make their reps any better. You as uke must deliver those attacks with good body mechanics and energy. I've seen too much wasted time as uke is not attacking with sincerity and nage isn't learning anything practical. Aikido has way too much of this going on. It has nothing to do with the validity of the techniques themselves, but how they are practiced. It is the duty of each of us to make those we train with better. A part of this is realizing that our turn to learn Aikido doesn't stop when we switch from nage to uke. Uke's job is a serious one, and a group which has poor ukes will not develop effective Aikido. It is only ourselves we are harming by being lazy ukes. The one last thing I want to mention is that the intermediate and senior students set the standard for what it means to be a good uke. Some instructors stress this point, but many do not. Show newer students what it's like to be able to attack slowly but with realistic movement and energy. Show what it looks like when you are partnered with another experienced student and you can open up the throttle and give full speed attacks with full intensity. This will show them the possibilities of what Aikido can do. When they learn it, their Aikido will improve and they will be better ukes for you. That makes you learn better and will improve your nage skills. When your group takes this approach on, it will become a strong training group and students will build remarkable skills. As the saying goes, the rising tide raises all boats. What do you think? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or go to the Facebook group Aikido the Marshall side and post a comment. The Spirit Aikido online program as of now has over 120 videos in the program with new ones added every few days. The most recent series of videos I cover fundamentals and application of Kaiten Nage as well as a powerful way to deal with someone who tries to pull you down with them after you throw them. I also just finished up a series on kick defenses. 
There's a link in the description section. I invite you to check it out. I always enjoy hearing from listeners of the show, whether through comments or questions. Thank you all for sharing your interest. Enjoy your training.